Hi. Today I want to talk about sizing overload for motor circuits. Now, uh, this is a super common application that ele uh, electricians are going to come across. We're basically sizing this device right here, which is my overload device. Now, the purpose of this device, this is going to basically interrupt the motor power circuit should that motor be drawing too much current or should it be getting too hot. Now we know with electrical equipment, heat is our nemesis. We do not want this motor to heat up too much. So there's a couple things that are gonna come into play here. Motors have something on them, something called a service factor. Now, what a service factor is, is a service factor is a number that's stamped on a motor Right, it'll say serve SF, right, service factor, and it's gonna be stamped on a motor. That number tells us how much load I can put onto that motor before I start to do damage to the motor, right? So a typical service factor is gonna be between one and 1.4, somewhere in there, right? So if a motor is stamped with a service factor of 1.2, I can put 1.2 the load on it or 120% of the load on it before I start to damage the motor. I can safely put, you know, 12 horsepowers of load on a 10 horsepower motor without damaging the motor. Now it's not recommended, but we can do that without doing physical damage to the motor. Now what this service factor leads us to is in the Canadian Electrical Code, uh, we have what we would call, or what I would call a service factor, factor multiplier. Multiplier. Now, uh, you can read the description below for the rules that I'm referencing here, but basically how a service factor multiplier works, or sometimes you'll see it as a SFM, right? Service factor multiplier. The code allows us to take the FLA of the motor, right? We know that there's going to be a FLA flowing through that motor. We multiply it by the service factor multiplier, and that tells us our overload setting, or the maximum allowable overload setting. And I'm not gonna do any calculations here, I just wanna quickly review how that, over, or that service factor multiplier works. So how that service factor multiplier works. The code book tells us, if, if your service factor is, less than 1.15 or if your service factor is unmarked, meaning they didn't build the motor good enough to bother putting a service factor on it, so they just left it unmarked. Then your service factor multiplier, service factor multiplier is 115% or 1.15. Now what that would mean is any motor that has an unmarked service factor, you would assume the service factor is one, or if it's less than 1.15. So my service factor is marked less than 1.15, I'm gonna use 115% as my service factor multiplier. So I would take my FLA or whatever current is gonna be running through that overload device, I take that current and I multiply it by 115%, and that is what I would set my overloads at, and that's my maximum allowable setting. Now if, different one here, if your service factor is 1.15 or greater, then, then your service factor multiplier equals 125%. Right, so if my motor has a stamped service factor of 1.15 or anywhere above 1.15, then to size this overload setting, what I would do is I would take my FLA or the current flowing through that overload and I would times it by 125%. That would be my maximum allowable setting of overloads. And that's for a standard motor. And that's really important to remember sizing these overload conditions or overload devices, right? Quite often it'll be a little set screw or a dial on the actual motor starter. Sometimes you'll be going to the wholesaler and you'll be buying heaters, right? If you're buying heaters, you cannot exceed the value you calculated. You have to go down. If you're 
setting the little screw, you just set it to exactly what your setting should be. Now, one really important thing to remember here is if you're using some type of reduced voltage starting, uh, something like a Y delta or an auto transformer or a part winding starter, your overloads need to be set on whatever current is actually gonna be flowing through that overload device. Right, so if you're doing some type of special motor starting, make sure you calculate what's gonna be flowing through that device. I do have a couple videos on that you can check out. Um, but yeah, that's the basics of setting and sizing your overload uh, devices for your motor circuits. Again, check the description for the rules that I'm referencing here, but thanks a lot for watching. Uh, please make sure you like and subscribe. It really helps me out and I like it. Thank you.